All right, what's on the bench today? Um, <laughs> it's sort of in pieces. Sorry guys, I couldn't wait for you. <laughs> I needed to take it apart and see what was inside. Um, this is a, uh, so we'll do, shoot this in reverse. Uh, this is a, a Hewlett Packard 4935A transmission test set back from the old analog telephone days. All right, so I see these on eBay. Found this one for 40 bucks free shipping. So yeah, I couldn't pass it up. I've been kind of fascinated with these things for quite a while, thinking that maybe you could repurpose them to do something cool. So um, we'll see if we can't figure out what you can do with this thing other than testing telephones, which nobody wants to do. Um, and uh, I think what you'll be interested in is how complicated this thing is. How much real cool analog circuitry. Look at all those mica caps. There's like a small fortune of mica caps there. Um, and then, of course, it's microprocessor controlled. Uh, so uh, let's start over here on the digital board. Uh, it's uh, analog supply. Here's the transform poking out the back. Um, comes over here to some filter capacitors and stuff. So that's all old school stuff. Here's our microprocessor. I'm not familiar with that one. Let's, uh, let's flip this thing around. Of course, it's all gold-plated Hewlett-Packard PC boards back from the good old days. Uh, let's see if we can get some date codes here. 88, uh, 87, 88, 87, 88, 87... Yeah, somewhere around in there, right? 1988, 89. Okay, uh, so what is the microprocessor of choice? Um, it is a, a ST Micro, an MK, we can barely read that. Where's my magnifier? Uh, it is an MK3870 slash 42. Also marked MK16145N-05. And he has a Hewlett Packard part number, 1820-2472, which is a custom part number. Um, so, yeah. Um, I don't see any ROM, ROM on this board. Um, I'm assuming this is RAM, uh, but it could be a masked ROM. I'm not sure. Again, everything has a Hewlett Packard part number on this thing, so you really can't uh, change the exposure here a bit. You really can't. Oops, you really can't figure out what's going on here. Uh, but it looks like uh, you know eight-bit demultiplexing ROM. Uh, some, maybe some IO tickling here. Uh, oh, here's the RAM. 14011s. One, two, three. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, not familiar with that one. It runs at, what's that, what's that clock speed there? So I can read it off. Four megahertz. All right, so it's a four megahertz microprocessor from the old days. Uh, there's some other process uh, clocks here. 6.144 megahertz and 4.194304. So some weird clocks there. Uh, so there's a analog devices chip here. Probably an A to D, D to A type of thing. Uh, then there's this really weird block here. I don't know what that is. 9100-2847. I don't know what that is. Uh, it uh, has a bunch of leads on it. So it might be a DC to DC converter. Uh, might be a clock module. I doubt it. Anyway, that's all what's on uh, this board. Let's take a look at this real fancy board. Oh, uh, before we go here, and it's got uh, three, terminal, three terminal regulators on sockets hooked up to the back panel. And again, all HP part numbers here. All right. Yeah, look at this beauty. Woo! Some Harris parts, uh, national parts, lots of national parts, Motorola part. Yeah, another couple of Motorola parts. Look at these. Look at these microcapacitors. Oh, they're beauties. They are beauties. 10,000 puff. Wow. 
Yeah, big fat ones here, the 10,000 puff, 2250, 1200, yeah. But these big jumpers, I've never seen big ones like that. 10,000 picofarads, woo! Them must be some big ones. Uh, yeah, look at how packed it is in here. Uh, so, uh, a couple uh, pots for trimming, solid tantalums, nothing but the best. Uh, this is where the goes out is here. This goes to the front panel. There's two connectors that go to the front panel, a little one here and a one over there. And then the two big boards connect with a ribbon cable. But look at this thing on the back. Also another weird thing. This one's got a big round, big round weird can. Probably a transformer, impedance matching transformer or something. I don't know what that is. Big giant, uh, Capacitor over here. Wow. Sprig, of course. Nothing but the best. Okay, let's uh let's move that over this away and let's take a look at the front panel. Again, the front panel has a, a connector there and a connector there. Oh, it's also got a, a ribbon cable, not a ribbon cable, it's a connector on it, so it can connect all of the DC bus or the uh, 8-bit bus here. Lots of uh, lots of buttons and uh, LEDs and stuff. That's all that's on here. Uh, a couple big chips though. A couple big uh, driver chips for the displays. Rev C. Alright. I don't know who built this board. Um, it's just made in the USA, but I don't know where it was designed. If it was a California thing or a uh, Colorado thing. I don't know. Everybody knows, shout out. All right, let's let's uh, let's see if we can't get it back together and back in working condition. So, got to go in the reverse order here. This uh, this thing fits on a like a so. And it's got some screws in the back here to hold that on. So that's pretty easy. Let's do that. All right, that's in there. Now I need to get the uh, I need to get the standoffs in there. I think the easiest thing to do is to uh, take this board out again and uh, it will just set in there this way. So I think I took it apart the bad way. This should have been the good way. So this will be easier. Probably how they did it in production. So let's take these three screws out. They're very, very simple. All right, now this will just flip up, easy. And then I can put in the standoffs, which are these long things. All right, and then these real long ones, they flip in like this. There we go, like that, 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 and then when the top goes on, it'll all be ready for it, so we can put our three screws back in. Perfect. Put our bale on. There's a spring in there. Make sure the spring's on the right side. I guess that's okay. Put this one on. Well, that's 
looking pretty good. Make sure the veil works. There we go. Flip it and put in these super long screws that have the feet. There we go. We are ready to go. Let's put the bail up over here. And hook up the power cord. All right, you ready? Power on. Can you hear that? Actually makes little sounds. It does a whole self-test when it turns on, and uh, so it uh, has a built-in uh, tone generator, a built-in receiver, and looks at noise. It's got like a, a notch filter to, to look at noise and it's all kinds of fancy stuff. So anyway, now that it's back together and running, uh, you can see here we can uh, change the tones here. Uh, you can set this to uh, to where you want to be, and then you can go step up. And uh, you can change the output level in dBm, and uh, the monitor is just a volume thing. Uh, the way that you use these things is there's a, a, a subscriber loop, I think they called it. There's a transmit port and a receive port. You can do reverse, flip those around. Uh, you can push them both in at the same time, I think. And then it connects itself to itself. <laughs> uh, there's a dial tone thing generator, I think. I don't know how that works. You can change the input impedance, 135, 600, 900. You can have a dial tone, you can have a hold. Uh, uh, you can actually use it as a frequency counter. Uh, so yeah. We'll do all those things and uh, see what we can uh, figure out what the second use for this thing is.